Welcome back to The Last Door, Season 2, Episode 2. Let's see if we can solve the mystery of the birds. Because I just found this book that mentions that basically the crow is an asshole and led them all astray, but the... Let's see. Yeah, the wisdom of the crested hoopoe and the prudence of the red-feathered robin could lead the remaining 28 back onto the path of righteousness. Now, the thing is, I only have two cloths. Given that the crow is an asshole, I would think that perhaps I'm supposed to cover the crow. But that doesn't seem to make any sense, because I've already done that before. And what am I supposed to do with the other cloth if that is the case? So I'm pretty... I, I'm thinking maybe I'm supposed to cover up the two ones that are righteous? I don't see how that would help, but I could try it. And none of the others are crows, right? Red feathers on its head and breast. Red feathers. Rebeculous. Hold on. Is that one of them? Red feathered robin. Red feathered araf... Arafacus rubecula. Rubecula robin. Yeah, I think that might be one of them. Looking for the hoopo. Well, none of those jump out at me, as being the other one. Crested Hoopo. It doesn't say anything about color, just Crested Hoopo. Maybe this one? Oh, Feathered Crest. Yeah, it's gotta be that one. All the birds have suddenly stopped their chittering. See, I don't think I did a good thing there, because doesn't the book say something about if they stop talking, that's when bad stuff happens? Yeah, the visitor will come, right? Sounds as if there's someone at the door. That's what it said, right? When they're all silent, the, vi the visitor will come. I think that's what it said on the cloths themselves. What does it say here? Without the hoopo and the robin, silence would have fallen forever. Well, now I've taken the hoopo and the robin out of the picture, so... Now silence is going to fall forever? Uh, they came in. But it was locked. Hello? What did I accomplish? I thought there'd be something left at the doorstep. There isn't, so does that mean there's somebody inside somewhere? Let's go look. Oh. That answers that. Mr. Wright. The poor man. It looks as if his heart gave in on him. His eyes. My God. They're fixed with an expression of utmost terror. Let me see. His fists are clenched. He is holding on to something. Something. 
It's some kind of stone figurine. He's holding it tightly, as if he was protecting it from someone. The figurine is beautifully carved, but it appears to be but one half of a larger artifact. Well, I just so happen to have the other half. I dug up from a grave. Joined together, the two pieces form an intricately carved figurine or idol. It is ancient, without a doubt. Perhaps I can use that at his seaside little cottage place? I still need to visit there. What has happened to him? I've seen death before, but never has a body left me so ill at ease. Uh, uh, I'm trembling. Windows open. Cold wind blows into the room. A cheerful scene that would have lifted my heart on any other day. It stands in stark contrast to the tragedy that has befallen this house. Thin layer of dust on the coat rack, but not on the coat. This is serious. I must break the news to Kaufman, and of course the local authorities will have to be informed. Kaufman. What is the matter? Kaufman. Do not worry. I've given him a mild sedative. Oh, he's so dead. He is so dead. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Dr. Armitage. The innkeeper called me because he was worried about your friend. Pleased to meet you. I'm Dr. Wakefield. What are Kaufman's symptoms? Strong coughing, general feebleness, dizziness. It is too soon yet for a diagnosis. It could be a simple cold, but the sudden onset and severity of his symptoms is certainly a concern. He must be monitored for the next few hours at least. Do not worry, Dr. Wakefield. I will remain here and take care of your friend. He's never going to get better. Alright, um... I wonder what I'm going to do with this picture now. I was going to give it to uh, the guy who just had a heart attack. Do you want it? No. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Can I search his stuff? Or should I still respect his privacy? Okay. He's not quite dead yet. Alright, let's visit the cliff. These rocks look like the remains of a landslide. Yeah, part of this place slid into the sea, right? Isn't that what, what the tragedy was that killed a lot of people? The roots of this venerable tree tightly grip the rocks that anchor it against the harsh winds. It's not even locked. Empty wardrobe. Its wood is rotted from long exposure to the sea air. The foundations of this house are heavily damaged. I must proceed with utmost care. It could collapse at any time. This landscape shows the house as it was before the landslide ruined it. I know exactly what goes here. There's a peculiar indentation in the stone. Strange symbols are engraved around it. Well, let's come to that in a second. I really shouldn't be walking here, because this could really easily just fall straight into the sea. 
This side of the cliff is heavily exposed to harsh sea wind and waves. There's something so... I don't know, like, beautifully poetic about standing on the edge of a broken house on a cliffside. Alright, let's put the thing in. It has triggered some secret mechanism. There is a passage behind the fireplace. It seems to lead into the cliff. This... This must be the entrance to the underground tunnel. I must go on. There's a note on the floor. Whatever you find down here, do not stop. Okay. This is going to close behind me, isn't it? I think it's going to close behind me. Just you wait. Or not. I'm waiting for the piano music. Alright, so it's a maze. Let's keep going west. Or left, I should really say. Some viscous substance. It could be some kind of fungus, or maybe the decomposed remains of an animal. There is a white pit in the middle of the chamber. It descends deep into the dark. I think I hear the sound of the sea far below. Okay, so that's probably not the way to go then. I have no idea where I am at this point. This part of the cave is blocked by a cave-in. Is that a body? <gasps> Piano music! These are... human remains. The flesh is gone, but the bones look undisturbed. How long have they lain here? Why on earth did Professor Wright not alert the authorities? I must press on. What possible research could have led to this? Here, coming from the left. Hmm? That's a very pristine piano for such an ugly place. There's a strange metal device hanging from the ceiling. 
Okay, so there are multiple ones of these listening devices. This one's aimed directly at the piano, which must have been the one I heard when I originally heard the piano on the radio thing. But there's also one at the front entrance of the cave. Kind of outside of the cave-in. There's probably more, too. There's a grand piano placed in the middle of the room. Wouldn't it be, like, all rotted and stuff from all the humidity and crap? Do I follow the sound? I guess? I don't really want to be down here. I should have a weapon on me or something. But I guess that's not going to happen. There's another listening device. There's a bunch of them. What the fuck? A small, a small passage, uh, passage goes into the bricked wall. It is too thin to pass through. Yeah, too thin for a normal-sized human, perhaps. Maybe not for a creature. Can I shine my light down it? No, apparently not. Wait, I just came from here, didn't I? Yeah, I think I did. Everything looks the same. Oh, I'm all the way back here. Let's go right this time. So to the right is a dead end, to the left is back where I came from. So I have to go to the middle. I think I went right... Okay, so I just need to keep going to every entrance and listen for the sounds, I think. What the fuck? The drawing represents a human figure stepping through some sort of an archway or door. Isn't that the same sort of symbol I saw on those weird things that I could flip around at the manor? Where you could flip between one or two things, like from the bird to the crow, from the open door to the closed door. Isn't this one of those symbols? So it sounds like it's in here, as if it passed through a doorway, one that I can't see. I'm guessing this is some sort of a hint, uh, some sort of a hint. Some sort of archway or door. Do I need to step through the same thing? I can't, like, actually step through it itself? Eh, go through! Go through the wall! I guess not.
Alright, so from here... Let's map out and make sure I go to every single place. Go to the left. Ooh. Aha! What is this place? strange machine. It does not seem to be working anymore. What's coming out of it? Did it, like, print out a bunch of stuff? Some sort of a printout? Taking readings, perhaps? Note on the floor. Who was gone will be back not the same, but somehow changed. Because that what lurks behind the door waits. And no one that has crossed through can hope to escape its blessing. Blessing, huh? If it was actually a blessing, then why would anybody want to escape? I must tell Coffin about all the all of this. Yeah, that's if I can find my way out of here. Good luck with that. These clothes are torn down to unrecognizable shreds. There's a tag in here with two initials. H-A. H-A. Have I met anybody with that name that would fit those initials? I don't know. Anyway, I think this is the archway. The one that I probably shouldn't go through because it'll change me forever. Large archway carved in the stone wall of the cave. Can I actually go through it if I wanted to? I don't want to, but I'm curious if I can go through it. Nah, apparently not. Okay. So we're just gonna leave and go tell Coffin, but in reality, we know something's gonna happen, right? A monster's gonna pop up, I'm gonna have to jump through the portal in slow motion. Something's gonna close behind me. Of course. What was that? I think it just came back through. Part of the stones, uh, part of the wall's stones seem to have just dislodged from it, leaving a large dark hole on it. Son of a... <laughs> I didn't think it would end on such a cliffhanger. Well, okay then. I thought I was gonna get back to, uh, to Kaufman and he would have his eyes picked out by crows or something like that. And then that would be the cliffhanger. Not so. Alright. Well, there we go. Ended the episode about two seconds away from dying. I'm sure he'll be fine. I'm Honestly, I'm pretty sure that he's actually going to jump through the portal, the archway. I think that's going to be a thing that happens. I have a feeling that's what's going to happen the, at pretty much the very beginning of the next episode. He's going to jump through the archway. It's going to take him to a weird place. And... Well, that's about it. That's what I think's going to happen. He's going to run away. Because the monster was in the direction that he needed to go to get out of the place. So the only other way to go is through the archway. I think he's going to jump through the archway, and it's going to be like a stargate, and it's going to take him to a weird planet, and there's going to be aliens on the planet, and they're going to take him hostage, but he's going to figure out, you know, some sort of a common way to communicate with the aliens, they're going to let him out, they're going to be best buds, and then he's going to live there for the rest of his life. Totally going to happen. Anyway, okay, so, uh, summary of this episode, some of my, my thoughts on this episode. Um, my thoughts about this episode are very, very similar to my thoughts about all the previous episodes. I don't feel like anything about this game has majorly changed it. I, I, I'm pretty sure I say this at the end of every episode, but I'll continue to say it because it continues to be true. This game continues to do 
The things that it's done well in the past, it continues to do well, and the things that it's done poorly in the past, it continues to do poorly. So it's pretty much, it's pretty much like a flat trajectory uh, of quality. Which isn't bad, because the game is pretty damn good. I think this series, and this episode included, of course, um, I would say they're decent adventure games with flashes of brilliance, is what I would say. There's occasionally a scene that happens that is just really, really cool. And in this episode, that scene was when I was doing the hypnosis. That was an awesome scene. That was so well done. I loved it. And it continues... The series continues to be pretty creepy, and uh, continues to have pretty damn good sound design. Really exceptionally good sound design. And what it does weekly, it continues to do weekly, which is, of course, in adventure games almost always, the puzzles. I won't belabor the point, because again, I've mentioned it in every single previous episode, I'm pretty sure. But one thing that I think I really want to drive home that I'm not sure if I've mentioned before is that even though I've mentioned that the puzzles are kind of silly and adventure gamey, even though they are that, and I've mentioned that at, I'm pretty sure, the end of every single episode of this entire series, I'm still going to continue to mention it. I'm not going to let it go. It has silly adventure gamey puzzles. And it's that's not good. I'm going to continue to mention it every single time. I think we've become so used to adventure games having silly adventure gamey puzzles that don't make all that much sense. We've become so used to that that it's kind of just expected. Like, yeah, it's an adventure game, you know, the story's pretty good, but you know, the puzzles are kind of blah blah blah. It's easy just to kind of like shrug your shoulders and just kind of dismissively say it. To just kind of assume that it's just the way things are. You know, adventure games just have puzzles that are like this. They're, they're silly, they're out of place, they don't really match what's happening in the story that much, and they're just they're just silly. And it's easy to just shrug your shoulders and just go, that's just the way things are. And to not really call much attention to it because it's, you know, the status quo. But I'm not going to do that. If I see puzzles that are silly and adventure gamey and shouldn't really be, I'm going to point them out. And I think that's important because it's so easy to become used to puzzles being like this. Puzzles and adventure games being like adventure game puzzles. It's so easy to just become used to that and just shrug your shoulders and dismiss it. But it shouldn't be dismissed. Puzzles and adventure games should not be like this. They shouldn't be. And I think if... I think if you just dismiss it, and accept it as the status quo and don't really call attention to it when it happens because you're so used to it happening, then they're not going to get better. If nobody points out that there are problems, they're not really going to change. Because nobody's going to think anything needs to change. But they should. The puzzles in this game aren't terrible, by no means. They're relatively good as far as adventure games go, but again, that's kind of the shrugging of the shoulders thing. As far as adventure games go, they're relatively good. But that's a thing. Most adventure games have really terrible puzzles, so that's not really saying that much. And, you know, they're okay. Like, 90... almost every single puzzle in this game is logical within itself. It is internally logical. But... It still involves, you know, a bit of pixel hunting. There's there's no highlighting of hotspots, have to pixel hunt a bit, and this is a game that has very extraordinarily pixely pixel art. So, like, when I found the matches, and the matches were represented by literally four pixels, like, that's kind of annoying. Just four slightly highlighted, huge, chunky pixels represent matches, you know, they're, they're just pixel hunty stuff. Um... The puzzles are just very silly. That's that's my biggest problem with the puzzles in this game, is just that they're very silly. All sorts of secret compartments and keys and blah blah blah, and it doesn't even make any sense why any of these things would exist. It makes no sense. I mean, they make a, you know, a hand-wavy attempt at explaining it. Like, you know, the, the guy's losing his mind and he always liked puzzles, so... He made you an adventure game so you could try to find the stuff by solving puzzles. So they make some half-assed, hand-wavy attempt to explain why these puzzles exist, but it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't hold up. It doesn't hold any water. It's just silly. So, yeah. The puzzles aren't bad. And relative to other adventure games, they're actually pretty good. But just looking at it in more of a zoomed-out way, just looking at the puzzles 
and seeing whether they even make sense to be in this game, to be in this experience. Does it make sense for them to be there? For the most part, not really. And I think it's important to have that perspective and realize that you shouldn't just shrug off this stuff and accept it as being the norm. Because it is the norm, but it shouldn't be, and that's the point. Anyway, despite all that, I continue to really enjoy this series. Despite its occasional frustrations, spending ten minutes wandering around aimlessly until I found out that you're supposed to go by the shadows from a certain angle to come to the window, this, this window right here, in fact. Aside from stuff like that, it was quite enjoyable. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And as soon as the next episode is released, I will, of course, play it. Thank you for watching.